welcome back my good students in our new course business communication to start our course i want to ask you a question can you imagine your life without a computer or a cell phone i know that it would be hard and difficult for you to answer this question because you were born and you find the computer the internet and a mobile phone but if you ask your parents or your grandparents this question they will find it easy to answer it because they were grown up into life without a computer or a cell phone and they were introduced to them later on in their life our next question are you a digital native or a digital immigrant by digital native it means you were born to a mobile phone internet a laptops and so on but if you are a digital immigrant it means that you were not born to any of these technologies and it was introduced in your life later on here the classification of groups according to generation and when they were introduced to mobile phone internet and laptops and computer in general we have first of all the first generation the g generation those are the people who were born between 1900 and 1924 and then we have the silent generation those are people between uh, who were born between 1925 and 1945 it means that they were introduced to the mobile phone and internet and so on by the age of 50 maybe more and then we have the baby boomers who were introduced to this technology by the age of 50 and then we have generation x y and z the X generation maybe it can uh, assemble your parents and then we are the Y generation and then we have the Z generation who were born to the internet computer and everything in their lives but the Y generation they were introduced to a mobile phone and internet later in their life maybe by the age of uh, 10 and you have here a website maybe if you take this link it will show you a video explaining the different generations so now this was an introduction to our course which is called business communication in the digital age so in order to be a communicator you need to be able to use all these digital technology in order to communicate because communication now is used through twitter facebook websites uh, etc so in order to be a good communicator you have to be proficient in all this so now we are going to study communication foundations the relation between business and our first question is what are communication skills we have traditional abilities like reading writing speaking listening nonverbal but now it's not only sufficient to have only the traditional abilities you need to have new abilities new requirements for the digital age which are to be a media savvy good judgment online maintaining positive image and presence protecting employers reputation so now in order to be a good employee you need to be able to use the internet and the digital technologies in order to maintain the positive image of institution and to keep uh, the good reputation of your so does that mean that writing is not important it's only okay to have the digital technology and this tech digital abilities without having the traditional abilities no writing now is more and more important than before because you are using writing in this digital age you are writing online either on the website of the company or the institution on twitter or so on so it's very important so you need to communicate your message clearly and effectively because you people are depending on you and the image of your institution depend on what you are going to write so you need to have a good ability to write in a proper way so this would lead us to the tool of success what should I have in order to be successful in the 21st century workplace so you need to have knowledge and information because we have two types of workers knowledge worker and information worker the knowledge worker are the worker who are getting paid because he has knowledge he is learned and he is willing to learn more he has education 
and the information worker is the worker who is able to process information and to produce information at the same time so in order to be successful you need to combine both to be knowledgeable and to have information and to be able to process the word figure and data so nowadays knowledge on the internet doubles every year so you need to be aware of this and as you can see that in the US labor market they still have shortage in talent so you have to equip yourself in order to be a good employee and to find your place in the 21st century world so this needs from you to work more on your critical thinking you have to think creatively and critically which means that you need to have an opinion backed up by reasons and evidence so you need to have an opinion or a point of view but you need to show me that you have a reason you are not just having a point of view because of this and you need to anticipate and solve problem you need to think and to find alternative solutions for your problem and to take decision and to communicate effectively often turns creative problem solving process we have three phases for solving a problem the first phase is exploring the challenge it means that you need to identify the challenge gather all the information in order to clarify the problem to know why do i have this problem and then you need to move to phase number two which is generating ideas you need to come up with new ideas to come up with ideas to solve this problem to brainstorm and then you need to pick up the most promising idea the best stuff then you have to move to step number three which is implementing the solution implementing the idea that you have selected so if you go through this three phases then this means that you have solved your problem you found the solution and then you start applying this solution social media the relation between social media and communication technology how social media is connected so social media help you to connect with consumers to invite feedback to improve your product and service because you are receiving this feedback from your consumer so you know which point you are lacking which product you need to have what's the problem somewhere and to respond to the crisis to respond to what's happening to draw traffic to blogs to twitter feed the company website to announce promotion and events so it's a communication channel between the institution and the consumers and it's easy and anyone can write and can ex expand his ideas and if there is a problem a consumer can write down their problems so be aware that the word of mouth either it's positive or negative it can travel in just a click of a mouse so this is one of the challenges of the social media that if it is a negative word of mouth then it's over for this an institution or company or whatever if it's a positive then this is great all this digital technology lead to the presence of anytime anywhere availability so we now have anytime anywhere employee who is working across all the time in any place so this lead to some challenges like working long hour without extra compensation there is no extra hour anymore previously they used to go to work maybe for 8 10 hours and that's it and if they are going to stay longer they got paid what's so called extra hour but now this is over being available anywhere and any time living with a blurry line between work and leisure and this lead to the pr problem of work work and ledger balance or work and life balance so you have to keep in mind that you need to find this balance remaining tethered to the workplace with electronic devices around the clock also the physical office is extending its reach by becoming mobile and always on there is no physical office anymore just having a laptop or a mobile phone with an internet access then this means that you are on all the time you are never off duty in a never sleep company the global marketplace and competition 
factor that prompted companies to move to emerging markets around the world. Now the local markets are saturated, so there's no other place for any new products or services. So now they are thinking about emerging markets and going for this market since we have rise of new communication technology, advanced forms of transportation, removal of trade barriers, just with internet and a computer you can access anywhere and you can have virtual teams all over the world. Requirement for successful communicator in new market. Understanding different customs, lifestyle, business practices, cultural awareness, flexibility, and this is very important. As we have studied before in the intercultural course, it's important to know the culture of the one you are communicating with in order to have a successful communication. If you don't understand the culture of this person, then you are going to ruin everything. Also coping with challenges of multiple time zones, vast distance and different language. And you are already doing this since you are students in an MRE program, but you are living in Egypt. So you have to keep an eye on the multiple time zone and the distance. The last point, developing new skills and attitudes. The shrinking management layer advantage. Shrinking layer, it means that we have previously various layers, more than one layer between the management and the line workers. So now, in order to cut cost or to save the cost and the efficiency, the layers shrinks, it decreases. So there were only few layers between the manager and the line worker. And this leads to a better communication and fast decision. Now, as we have studied before, the population in America is going into diverse. So this led to a lot of benefits for all the teams, for the consumer, for the work team, and for the businesses. Because a diverse staff is better able to respond to an increasingly diverse customer base. Because we have employees from different backgrounds, so they can understand people from different backgrounds. So they can create products that it's okay for each of the consumer demands. So, and the consumer, when they deal with the company respecting their values, because they have people who understand their background and their culture, they respect this. Virtual and non-territorial offices, mobile and decentralized workspaces. We, so the workspaces now is mobile, it's not centered. We have flexible work arrangement. And now we have the work shifters. The work shifters are people who are working Whenever they have a laptop or a mobile phone and internet access, then they are working from whatever place. Anytime, anywhere, office, in the co-working space. The co-working space is whenever a virtual team or people who are working from homes or whatever places, they want to have a real meeting, they can go to a co-work space where can they had their meet. The network office in hyper-connected world. This helps to be more mobile, more interaction, and the biggest shift is the paperless communication. No more need for paper communication. Media richness. The more helpful cues and immediate feedback the medium provides, the richer and less ambiguous it is. Whenever you need to have a rich medium, rich here means that it's face-to-face -face and telephone conversation. It's for the complex issues, the sensitive subject. But if it's just routine, unambiguous problem, then go for the lean medium. Written media, such as email, letter, memo, note. This leads us to the next point, the social presence. The social presence means the degree to which people are engaged online and ready to connect with each other. Media with high social presence convey warmth and are personal. So, if you want to have a social presence, go for the rich medium which is face-to-face, -face, video conference, live chat. If it is in a normal, unambiguous action, then go for the email, the social media. Informal communication channels, such as the grapevine, it's the gossip, from the break room to water cooler to social media. This carries unofficial message flow haphazardly, can be remarkably accurate, disliked by the management, Whenever the employees thrive for official information and they want to know and it's limited, then they go for the gossip. Goals of ethical business communicator. 
So, in order for my business or for my actions to be ethical, it needs to be abiding by the law. Tell the truth, be objective, label opinion. You have to differentiate between what is opinion and what is a fact. To give credit for the person who is doing something right and to communicate clearly. Use inclusive language and this is very important. We need to use a language that include, not exclude any person or any background or any idea. In order to know if my action is ethical, you need to ask yourself these five questions. The first question is, is the action legal? Would I do it if I were on the opposite side? Can you roll out a better alternative? Would a trusted advisor agree? Would family, friends, employer or co-worker approve? If it's yes for the five questions, that this means that this is ethical, this is right, do it. Now that's it for chapter one. This presentation is just a summary for the chapter. You need to read the chapter for further the discussion. You have a scenario. And based on the scenario, you have to respond to question. The scenario is one of your friends is called Josh in the accounting department. He tells you he heard from a reliable source that 15% of the company staff will be fired. You have accidentally, accidentally been copied on an email and you know that three employees was going to be fired next month. One of those people are your good friend. You are worried about your own job and you had in the restroom that a group of people talking about the changes. You know something that this group... You have to answer these five questions. What are the ethical issues you need to consider? Who should you talk with? Do you have obligation to warn your friend? How might you handle the situation and what information should you share? The assignment. In the assignment, you need to write an essay. In this essay, you are going to discuss the topic of 24-7, anytime, anywhere. How can employees be successful at their job while maintaining a life outside the of work? This is, as we said, the work-life balance. You may use your book or any independent you have to answer these questions from your own experience or from the book. But your essay should be between 400 to 500 words long. Please read the rubric before you start writing your essay. That's it for chapter 1. You still have a quiz to do it. Thank you, my dear students.